Next, I would like to welcome Heather Newman. So Heather grew up in Southern Colorado through high school and then graduated from college over in East Texas. And that's where she met her husband, Sean. Now they did live in Tucson, Arizona briefly, and they've raised their four children in Wichita for the past 20 plus years. Heather teaches Bible classes to children and adults at her local church and also teaches fifth grade at the Classical School of Wichita. We're thinking of her, my goodness. Let's go ahead and welcome up Heather to the stage. Come on up. Good evening. I'm Heather Newman. My husband, Sean, and I, as she mentioned, moved to Wichita 23 years ago. We now have three daughters and a son. Our family looks like we belong together. However, none of us look exactly alike. When I see my children's variations, I often see our history too. I grew up in Southern Colorado with parents and grandparents who live valuing God first and family second. We have had difficult stories in our past as well as our present, but through Tommy Orange and There There, I began to realize that family stories told repeatedly shaped me, but so also did those stories not, sp not spoken. For example, my maternal grandmother lived many childhood years in a rescue mission where her father was a minister. When I hear my son whistling as he spins wood on the lathe, I re vividly remember my great-grandfather who whistled as he worked in carpentry too. Negativity about the rescue mission was not spoken. He loved Jesus and loved people, no matter their circumstances. Great-grandpa supported and strengthened my grandmother when she was widowed with three children before the age of 25, and then when she later married a man also widowed with three children. Her faith in the Lord, along with family support, sustained her through single parenting and later in raising a blended family. As a newly widowed woman now with three, six children and dozens of grandchildren, she continues to be strengthened by God's goodness. Through grandma's stories, I hear a history of past pain and sorrow undergirded with joy and contentment in God. As she listens to, prays for us, and cheers for us all, I'm encouraged to rely on the Lord and to love my family in our highs and in our lows. Last fall, she watched many of my daughter's high school tennis matches. I'm not sure if the 90-year-old or the 16-year-old had a stronger passion for to win. Grandma's life is evidence that God is good, even if life for a tennis match is challenging. I think my paternal great-grandparents could have also passed down difficult legacies. They lived through the Great Depression in New Mexico when farming failed, and their heritage included a Cherokee grandfather from Arkansas and the sadness from generations before him, as well as Irish immigrants. But I only knew my grandpa always had a stick of Wrigley's spearmint gum and a smile for me. I saw and heard his unconditional love for Jesus and family, not of dwelling on troubles I know existed. He passed on that faith and devotion to my grandfather, Reuben. I knew Grandpa had a difficult childhood because of his mom's emotional struggles, but I never, never heard him tell those stories. Instead, he tells tales of good hunts with friends and family. Since childhood, he hunted to provide food. Once he spotted the bobcat shown with him in the picture, chased it down until it climbed a tree where he shot it. He and Grandma lived only three miles from me in Colorado on 40 acres while I was growing up. They had a fish pond, horses, snowmobiles, and an ice pond, which invited my brother and I to explore. They loved sharing hospitality with all their guests, including me. Because their hospitality extended to all, we named our youngest granddaughter after Grandma. Though Grandma passed away a few years ago, Grandpa tells our daughter how much she looks like Grandma. Anytime our daughter wants to host friends, we try to say yes. Two weeks ago, she and 12 other eighth graders had dinner in our home, followed by a lot of play and a screaming competition. <laughs> she was a fun host, but we pray she loves Jesus as, and others as my grandma did. One fascinating story is of my grandma's father. Immediately after World War II, he began annually to ship 100 pounds of pinto beans from his farm to a German woodcarver who was trying to provide for his family. This bird and deer are gifts from the German to granddad that our family still displays. My husband is half German, and our oldest daughter seems to be the most German-looking of our kids. She traveled alone with a layover in Germany once and was trying to fill out the paperwork before arriving at the airport. She kept remembering this story of our granddad and his beans. 
The men next to her on the airplane didn't speak a word of English, but saw her German last name, walked her through all the paperwork, through customs, and then to her gate. 80 years later, Grandad's story gave her peace in Germany, and she feels a bond with him, though she never met him. Granddad's wife, my great-grandmother, Olitha, inspired me to learn. She once told me how she was ridiculed and called old maid because she refused to marry my granddad until she graduated high school. So she married him the weekend after graduation as one of the few girls to finish school. And every time I would see her, she would go out of her way to be kind to others. I saw granddad and grandma never telling stories of par farming years, but they worked and they loved. My family is connected by grandparents who lived to love Jesus and others, each in their various ways. Irish were forbidden at times in the United States. Native Americans endured harsh treatment. Germans were placed in U.S. internment camps. Yet these aren't the stories passed down in my family. Instead, I live with legacies of kindness through the love of Jesus. He is the creator of all ethnicities, and I see evidence of his goodness in every culture. He created us for an identity that loves him first, no matter if we're Irish, Cherokee, or German. So the spoken and the unspoken stories prove to my family that our security is knowing him. So we can look towards the future with strength and a smile. Thank you.